Welcome to Game Changers Silicon Valley, a show about today's emerging innovations that may be the game changers of tomorrow. My name is Jim Connor, and I will be your host tonight. Education is one of the critical components in our continued capacity to maintain our innovation and to have an electorate able to analyze complex issues. My guest is Doug Peltz, founder and CEO of Mystery Science, a program that provides science lessons based on solving a question that is presented as a mystery. Doug, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'd like to take a few minutes and ask you to explain to me and the audience for that matter, why has our teaching of science fallen so far behind our scientific developments? That's a really interesting question. I, I think in general the, the content of what's taught in schools has been overlooked um, forever. I think that the 21st century is the time that this is finally going to get center stage and, and start to change and we'll see real innovation. When did it start to, when, when did teaching uh, science start to, shall we say, have separation from what was going on in the world? It's hard to say. I mean, it's actually teaching science is, is, is actually sort of a new phenomenon. It wasn't until the turn of the century that people started to teach science or take science in uh, K through 12 years seriously. Mm -hmm. And I, I think even when I go back and look at, at how science was taught, I think it's always been a little too focused on the vocabulary and definitions. Um, it's, it's how I got into this in the first place was I was so excited to get to college and learn science from the scientists. I thought that would be the real beacon of, of uh, logical explanations. And instead, I was kind of confused by a lot of the things that I was taught. I, I was surprised to find that even though we've achieved this high level of, of uh, scientific sophistication, we've been to the moon, but we haven't really nailed how to convey scientific knowledge to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds like you've undertaken that effort. Yes, this is what, this is what we're interested well, in. Tell in me a little science. about Mystery Science. Then. Mystery Science is a website that uh, any elementary teacher can go to, and they can get elementary science lessons. So it makes it easy for every teacher to teach a great science lesson to their kids. Um, currently we have third grade and we're rolling out K through five next year. So the teacher goes, do they pick from among the lessons and decide which ones to take? In other words, the ones they're more comfortable with or do you have a sequence? We have a sequence available. They can pick with, from within any unit mm -hmm. um, based on what their needs are and we're aligning it ultimately with the new national science standards. Mm -hmm. And so they're organized by units. Teachers will recognize, oh, I teach astronomy. Okay, here's the astronomy for third grade. How's the response been in the schools? It's been tremendous. So we started just a year ago, um, and it was a very early pilot program with just a few teachers. Curious to see, is this the sort of thing they want? And we got incredible feedback, and so we've been moving full steam ahead, and we have uh, uh, a few hundred teachers currently using the program. What kind of feedback did you get that it was um, motivating or exciting or? That? Two kinds of feedback that I've been most excited about. One is just from students um, through the teachers hearing that uh, a teacher went to parent teacher conferences and the parent said, I don't know what you're doing in science class, but my kid has me out every night looking at the constellations. Um, two, also just making it really easy for teachers. It's mm -hmm. another thing we're interested in solving is just elementary teachers in this country are supposed to be jack of all trades. They have to teach every subject, most of them anyway. And so there's no division of labor. And so we're trying to make it easy for them and do the heavy lifting on the science mm -hmm. part for them. And when you say the heavy lifting, you mean you have a, a lesson that's well thought out, well designed, has the answer that the teacher knows about, and perhaps a way for a teacher to present it to the students so there is some self-discovery, is that? Exactly. It's a set of short videos with heavy on visuals where we set up a mystery and we lead the students through a problem but the teachers role in this is to facilitate a classroom discussion or facilitate the students making predictions and then managing the hands-on activity that follows. It sounds like the teachers are engaged in this also because a, it, takes, it lets them teach a very valid and uh, current technology lesson and it doesn't require them to have a PhD in that subject matter. Right, that right. And we put a lot of time as well into thinking about what makes each topic interesting. So if a teacher was teaching astronomy, for example, um, they were going to do, there's typical California standards would have them teach about how the sun moves across the sky and that's how we tell time. But we've spent a lot of time as a content production company thinking about what are the visuals that make this the most compelling? What's the story? What's, how could you frame this as a mystery? In our case, that mystery would be who set the first clock? And so we set up a complete story around that. And just uh, the bottom line for us is what do we do to hook the kids in that, in that first minute of the lesson? you have anybody else saying, no, uh, we've done this or, you know, take No, it. unfortunately, I, I would even say there's, there's very little competition here. We've been so focused, scientists have been so focused on pushing the frontier of scientific knowledge that I think they've neglected 
this, this really crucial problem of how do you transmit that knowledge to the next generation? Uh, what you do and what was the inflection point in your life that you said, you know, I'm going to do something about this. And this is the great thing about entrepreneurs. They take personal responsibility for doing something about the opportunity or the problem. I'll let you yeah. speak to that. I, like I said, it started when I was in college. I thought I'd be a scientist. I, I really thought that I was going to go down that path. And it was when I started taking physics classes, and it was just memorizing formulas, that I got onto this idea that something's off in terms of how they're explaining things. So I went and taught science and developed my own um, unique approach to teaching science for seven years to elementary and middle school students down in Southern California. Meanwhile, I had a friend, Keith Schacht, who, uh, a friend since college, and he, his last job was at uh, Facebook as a product manager at Facebook. And increasingly over the years as we'd meet and, and talk, we realized that our goals were really aligned. We want to do something to change how Americans think of science and technology, and this is our starting point. How's the coverage of schools? Are you only are you in a region, are you in the U.S., are you, are you international yet? It is international. Um, we have, we, every day we log in and see there's people <laughs> all over the world. It's kind of crazy. Um, we, couldn't, we couldn't take down the site on Thanksgiving because we had people in Indonesia, Indonesia still using it. Yeah. Um, but it's our pilot year, so we're slowly ramping up uh, to, to get more and more users and, and you know, be able to facilitate that kind of communication huh. with all these people. Are you the, shall I say, the CTO, chief scientist who puts this stuff together? I, so I'm, I am the, uh, primarily in charge of content. Yeah. Keith is the CEO, actually, uh, CEO. Uh, and to correct you from earlier. And, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm working on the lessons with, along with someone else. Okay. And uh, we have a full-time developer as well. Okay. And uh, it's basically your idea, your insights that you carry through with, in some collaborative environment. Do you go out and check with other uh, experts on this to get their ideas too? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talking to people doing interesting things in science education research and mm -hmm. yeah, scientists yeah. themselves. I was just on the phone last week with a scientist in Florida. Yeah. Here in Silicon Valley, there's a whole educational technology community. A lot of them are focused on tools for helping teachers, whereas we're sort of unique in being focused on the content. I'm going to ask you a couple questions about career, not your career so much, but the career of people who are coming through the uh, college system, basically. Uh, I've met people at San Jose State, and some people at Stanford and Berkeley, and they're very earnest and very dedicated, but they are having that same disturbing experience that you're having that some of my teachers really don't have this down, or they may have it down for themselves. They're not a very good teacher. What recommendation would you give to them? Uh, bear with it, go for it, join us when you get out of school. Wh um, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, try to find the best teachers you can. Um, I, I would say, and, and there are a lot of uh, review apps and, and these sorts <laughs> of things that, that help that, that weren't there when I was in college. Um, the other thing is that I found really useful is when you're studying science, oftentimes what happens is the, the background gets dropped. So they'll just teach you a concept, but we, have, we often lose sight of the fact that any concept in science is a solution to a problem that scientists were at one time grappling with. And so, so often, you know, like you show up to physics class and it's Newton's three laws of motion handed down from on high, like, like the Ten Commandments or something. And uh, so go back and find that original context. Look at the history of science. Look at what, what problems was, say, Newton's grappling with in the first place that led him to these. And usually when you follow that path, you wind up getting a lot more clarity in the concepts. That's usually what's that background context and that framing is what's left out of education and is what makes it confusing when you approach a science class and there's just all these terms and, and all these uh, rules to be memorized. That's what mm -hmm. makes something pure memorization as against understanding. So that's what mystery science is about, then. Your, yep. your product. And uh, you take the concepts, the background, you bring it together, and you have the, the students, which are young students at this point, solve a mystery. And how do they solve the mystery? I've, I've been on your side. I've been actually. I was very impressed with the quality of the videos and the way it was organized. But thank you. How do they solve the mystery? Do as a team? They do as individuals, or can they get it wrong? Um, yeah, increasingly, <laughs> that's something we're, we're we're experimenting with. They yeah. they can get it wrong. Um, they there are some that they do them as individuals. There's others that they do them in partners. Uh, we 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 find that. I mean, I find as a teacher, switching up that format is part of a of a uh, mm -hmm. making the class exciting. Any other teachers? I, I, you must get teachers wanting to join you in some way, collaborate. collaborate something Not enough. Not I'd enough. love to get Not more. Enough. So it keeps, yeah, if, okay. if you're watching this, get in, t get in touch with us. Okay, so what's the best way? We're going to put up a little nameplate here, but what's our uh, lower thirds? But what's the best way for people to reach you on your web go and email? Go to mysteryscience.com. Okay. Yep. And just register and go from there. You can just register from there and you can contact us from it's there. It's entirely free? Right now, this is a pilot year, totally free. Um, it will be paid, and we haven't figured out pricing yet, but we're getting there. Um, it's an excellent program, it sounds like. If you were to um, advise an entrepreneur coming into the educational sector, you know, because you're in it now and you've gone through this, 
in, uh, you see quite a wave of people coming into education. It's a very uh, strong marketplace. What would be your advice to them in terms of where do they, wh wh where are they going to find their niche? Yeah, I mean, the best advice is advice I think it, most entrepreneurs will give and most venture capitalists will give as well, which is absolutely solve a problem. Make something people want. Mm -hmm. Don't sit there and spin something from your head. There's this idea uh, that I think it's sort of a field of dreams idea in, that if you build it, they will come. Uh, and I see a lot of people do that. If they think they, this idea they have is really pretty. Um, we, we, this evolved for us with Mystery Science. We did not start thinking that we do elementary school lessons. This was as a result of going out there and talking to a lot of teachers and finding what they wanted. Did you do a couple of iterations? There are, yeah, there were. there were. Yeah, so like earlier, for example, we were focused on um, middle school science teachers, thinking that maybe that would be the place that we'd start. And then we realized the elementary teachers are the ones who need the most help. What do you do when you find a teacher that is struggling, the teacher's struggling? Do you have anything for that? The best thing, I mean, f in terms of the science lessons that we're offering, we, the, we, w what we're doing is making it, we call it open and go. So with little to almost no prep, a teacher can just open this up and start teaching. Um, what it does is it frees the teacher up. If they're working on some other skill set in their teaching, like classroom management, for example, it's, it's really hard as a teacher if you're trying to become a better classroom manager at the same time having to develop lessons on a subject that may not even be your strong suit. So, you know, that's the best way we can help in this is we'll free them up to focus on the science teaching so that they can be uh, thinking about other skills that they're trying to strengthen. Well, Doug, I want to thank you very much for coming in today. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, learning about your product. I've uh, signed in and used it, and uh, I thought it was fascinating, frankly. And I want to wish you every success going forward. Thank you. And I hope to see you back here. I think we'll come back to you in maybe um, six months to eight months. and. You let us know if there's any major break breakthroughs in your uh, science, mystery science program. We certainly will. Thanks. Okay. This is Jim Connor. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this segment of Game Changers Silicon Valley. Each week we address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow. We look forward to your continued interest and participation in the upcoming shows. Thank you and good night now.